Hello and welcome. My name's Tim Shank. And I'm Brian McAvoy. This is Two Cyborgs and a Microphone, brought to you by Twin Cities Plus, creating an intelligent, capable, and resilient community. Okay, so today we're going to handle a touchy subject, religion. Now, we're just two recreational cyborgs with opinions and microphones. Two cyborgs and a microphone. But we stand by our beliefs. And if they stir hateful feelings in you, then we probably don't want to talk to you anyway. Eloquent as always, Brian. Okay, so I've come under attack. I, there's some guy who put a YouTube video. It was about a news story that they did on me and implants and stuff. Really went off the deep end. And I did a little searching. I there found one that, that some Muslim gentleman, he also did one. I couldn't understand what he was saying, but it was probably similar. It's kind of crazy how personal people take something I do to my body. And that's, that, that's, that's the first thing that, that occurs to me is, is why do you care? what I'm doing in my body. Right? I mean, yeah, as grinders and, and biohackers, we have uh, plenty of hurdles, not just from, like, people who just think it's kind of ishy to legal stuff in regards to what can be done medically. You know, we can't go to a doctor for a lot of this stuff. We have to deal with uh, people in our family who are opposed to it for good or not good reasons. To have to deal with you know, people in in religious positions being opposed to us, that makes it even harder. What, when you say good or not good reasons, what would be a good reason? Can you give me an example of that? If there was maybe the person has a history of being really prone to infection and somebody's mother is like, I don't want you to do that. You're you're going to get an infection. You, you get an infection from a paper cut. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, I can see why you... You wouldn't want your kid to do that. Well, sure. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, it's a health issue. Yeah. I mean, who, who's going to look out for you more than your family? Sometimes they cross a boundary and they're like, no, I don't want you to do that. Well, this is my choice. Sure. Well, I, I you know, I did a lot of searching for in different holy books for any real reference to human enhancement in general. And I didn't find a whole lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of passages in the Bible that have to do with the body being a temple and not corrupting the temple. But there, it, it, but that was really all I was able to find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a big sanctity of body thing that that we encounter, where people just think that the human form is perfect or nearly perfect or should not be tampered with. You're you're Catholic, Brian, so you'll know more than I do on this. But I don't think there's anything in the Bible that says the human body is perfect. It. If if I remember correctly, the human humans were made in the image of God. That might be where it comes from is, you know, oh, we, we, were, we were created to be, you know, in, in his image. But, you know, why why do you think you can tamper with that? That seems full of hubris. Hmm. Well, I, I can kind of get that. But, you know, why do you cut your hair then? Why are you shaving your face? Because that's something God put on you. According to Leviticus, you're not supposed to shave at the uh, the edges of your beard or your temples. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Le Leviticus. Yeah, as as you mentioned, I'm Catholic, and Leviticus is kind of a, a soft area when it comes to a lot of a lot of Christians. I, I, I guess I get it. I I point to all the foods they're eating, and the stuff that's in the drinks they're drinking, and the air that they're breathing, and the TV they're watching, and I would. Wonder, I would suggest that there's many corruptions in that sense, in that context, that are far more damaging to the human created in the image of God than my little NFC implant. Am I crossing the line by saying that? I, I think a lot of people who argue religion are, argue black and white. They don't look at at severity. It's either you've you've crossed what the Bible says, period, or you haven't, or, or you're in, in line with God. You're either sacred or you're profane. Hmm. Interesting, because I, I would suggest go drink another Coke and tell me who's, who's corrupted their temple. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, right? there's so and... many things we do that are bad to ourselves. So many things we do to change ourselves, our personalities, our, the way we act, the things we do that that I, I judge not, yes, the judge not, yes, the oh, never mind. 
I'm not going to even try to say it. But, Judge but, you know, not lest ye be judged. That's exactly what I was trying to say. And and it, to me, it just sounds hypocritical. It totally sounds hypocritical because I mean, there's something about casting the first stone, too. Oh, yeah. Boy, I, I didn't realize I, I had so much, so many religious statements in me. Oh, I'm getting worked up just thinking about this stuff. Like, I, I find like I'm arguing you and, and we're on the system. We're on the same page. We're on the same side here. <laughs> well, I, I do understand. I, I respect religion. I'm, I'm not a religious person. I'm very, I've always been very spiritual and I respect, I respect religion. I respect the dogma. I, I've never considered you disrespectful towards religion or people in religious authority. Oh, and I, I don't think I am either. I, I was in church last week for a, a double baptism. Before that, I was at a Catholic mass, like I should be at every week. I, I'm not a great Christian, but I can tell you this: as as somebody with implants in their hand, when the Eucharist touches my hand, neither it nor my hands have burst into flames. Well, so I think that's a good uh, sign. I'd, I'd like to think that's God's nod to say, "Hey, yeah, that's cool." Maybe not. Yeah, believe it or not, actually, I was president of a church council once for like two years. Yeah, yeah, not a. It was a inclusive church. We'll say that, mm-hmm. and they'd probably get mad if I called it a church. I, I I admit I haven't told any priests that I have an implant, so may, maybe that would sway things. My father-in-law is a pastor, and he has no problem with it. He was a pastor. He's actually retired now, but yeah, he doesn't have any. He doesn't see any problem with it at all. I would argue that God gave us the faculties to do this, to Im- to improve ourselves. But yeah, that's me. Well, I'd actually be interested to hear from any any people that are in that role. I I, I know what fanatic followers say, but I'd like to see. I'd like to. I wouldn't mind hearing what other people in in a leadership role in a church would would actually think about it. Yeah, I'd I'd be open to a one on one debate with uh, with. A, a, a biblical scholar or any religion. Hmm. Right, let's see if we can line that up. So I'm seeing a bunch of a bunch of things in Genesis, and it and it really all comes back to the body being a temple and being created in the image of God. But nothing specifically says don't. Well, there's nothing there's nothing specific in any of it. As a matter of fact, the passages I started looking up were were about tattoos because. I consider recreational cyborgism at this point in 2017 to be body mods for the most part. Again, we, we get them mm-hmm. installed at piercers or they're very much along the lines of, of body mods. So Leviticus, like I mentioned, and let me read that passage. This is Leviticus, Leviticus 19. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself. I am the Lord. That was passage 28 from Leviticus 19 uh, from the King James. That's what, we're refer- that's what I'm referencing. Did you go back at all to see outside of the King James Bible to, to see if there is a, tran- a translation that has a different sort of slant or meaning? I, I glanced at a couple other translations, and they, they seemed pretty much in line with that. None of the hmm. words were so significantly different that, that it was worth mentioning. Well, that's pretty clear, actually. There, I mean, if you, if you are of, of this belief, then that's pretty darn clear. Oh yeah, I, I'm not arguing that Leviticus might be okay with this. I'm saying that this is where in Leviticus it says don't do this. So, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to plead innocent by reading that. I'm I'm saying this is significant towards that. I'm saying I personally don't put much stock in Leviticus. Whether you do or not, the passage itself says specifically for the dead. So without knowing what exactly is intended by those three words, I, I would hesitate to say that, that we understand the statement as a whole. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. Well, I've got tattoos, so I <laughs> guess it's kind of moot. By the letter of that, then, yeah, then an implant of a magnet or an RFID would not be against I don't think so. And and that's that's the one thing that I I do not like to do is take things literally, especially out of these old books. That I, I've read tons of them. I mean I, I, I love to study this stuff. And taking it literally when it's been handed down for so long is such a dicey proposition. I mean right. it was 
it was spoken a different language than than we're reading it by several full i you know it's always up to the interpretation of the person doing the transcription and when that happens over and over it's like a, like the what's that game telephone game telephone or whatever game. oh the priest said this oh my friend who talked to a priest said this oh my friend who talked to a priest who's da, 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 down the line and eventually people hate gays what yeah how did that happen that's why i was kind of interpreting just saying okay this is against Body mods. Okay, well, I'd consider this a body mod, so Leviticus is probably not too too keen on a magnet implant. But let's talk about the NFC implant, because in Revelation, um, and this is oh what boy. they called me out for, <laughs> is the mark of the beast. So, and he causeth, he, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. But now that is pretty somewhat, it's pretty specific as far as the purpose of the mark. Right. And that's payment information. I mean, pay, that's, that's payment. So doing business and payment. And honestly, these NFC tags may someday evolve to be, to hold payment information. Sure. It does, however, go on to indicate that this is the sole method of payment, which <laughs> we we are a long ways from that. But you know, if if sometime down the line, to five or ten years from now, this became the only way to pay for something and it was always an implant, I would I would maybe change my opinion of this. Now the, the people who point towards Revelations thirteen, passages sixteen and seventeen have not had a clear path because this was also said about credit card numbers before that this was said about social security numbers and before that who knows so nfc just seems like the latest in a line of things that people say oh this this is the sign of the beast this is this is end times i i think there's going to be something in a few years that people are going to point at that and say oh no that's the sign of the beast well we are pattern recognition machines right Mm-hmm. Whether or not that pattern recognition is actually reality, if we see patterns, we can we call them out. Well, you know what I wish I wish we had more quotes from other other holy books because I really would like to see us have a more rounded viewpoint. But I I, I just wasn't able to find them. Yeah, I encountered the same problem. I think part of it is that you know we live in America. This is a Judeo Christian country not officially but it is and so that that's what we hear because this is where we live uh, the people who oppose us speak our language so I, I think that's why we encountered that yeah I, I did look into tattoos and Islam and Sunni Islam tattoos are forbidden Shia Islam tattoos are permissible whether or not this extends to different body mods such as piercings or implants, is up for debate, but there's kind of a little slant. Religion having a slant? What? No, <laughs> no. All right, so here here's a slant for you. What about a more Luddite religion such as the Amish? I'm pretty sure they would have a very clear line in the sand about about implants. You know, I don't know much about about the Amish. Just you know what I've seen in movies and stuff like that. Where do they draw that line, do you know? They're pretty old school, and I think they take Leviticus a lot more seriously because they won't wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. So I'm pretty that. sure if they won't wear buttons, they wouldn't go for a magnet implant. You know, I think I'd make a good Amish person. I like simple. If I could wear the same color every day, I would. I don't know if your job in IT would uh, survive in an Amish community. Well, yeah, good point. Well, I want to... Put it out there again that I'm willing to have a a debate recorded on both sides uh, with anyone with any religious scholar who's who's willing to talk with me. If I'm, I'm looking for a very open communication, I, I call it a debate, but it could just be a conversation. So, mm -hmm. if anyone out there wants to uh, pass this along, I'd be I'd be more than happy. Excellent. And I'm taking bets on that. I'm going to give Brian two to one odds on this, on this whole thing. <laughs> it's not a contest. So thank you for listening. 
We'd like to invite our listeners to email us at two cyborgs at twincitiesplus.org. And you can spell this, the number two or you can write the number two. It's two cyborgs at twincitiesplus.org. All right. We got the two cyborgs on your back. You can get a hoodie with us on the back. Just check out our show page. Go to the store link and get yourself a hoodie. This is Brian McAvoy. And I'm Tim Shank. You have been listening to Two Cyborgs in a Microphone, brought to you by Twin Cities Plus, creating an intelligent, capable, and resilient community. Like, follow, share, plus one, and don't forget to subscribe on any of our popular podcast services, including Google Play Music, iTunes, and Stitcher. Help us move up the podcast ladder by subscribing and commenting on iTunes. Brian. Brian.